Hi folks, hope you are doing great. Today in this video, I am going to talk about proof key for code exchange or PKCE. We pronounce it as Pixie. Pixie was introduced in the RFC 7636 and it is applicable for the authorization code grant type in OO2. It tries to solve the problem of uh, authorization code uh, interception attack. If you use uh, authorization code grant type with Pixie, then you can prevent uh, the code interception attack and and most of the time we see this in uh, mobile apps when you develop native apps with OAuth authorization code grant type those apps are susceptible for code interception attack if you don't use pixie first i'll show you how pixie works with authorization code grant type with a demo and for the demo we use wso2 identity server if you hear about WS2 Identity Server for the first time, it's an open source identity and access management product released under the most business friendly Apache 2.0 license. You can download WS2 Identity Server from WS2.com, go to Products, Identity and Access Management, and then you can download the latest version, it is IS530. And at the uh, time of this recording, it's the latest version, but we are working on the very next version that is IS540 will be released in a couple of weeks time. Once you download it to your local machine, you only need to have a JDK 1.8 plus uh, installed in your machine and set up the Java home. That's the uh, that, that's all the prerequisites you need to have. I already have downloaded the identity server. Uh, you can see it here. So this is the identity server home then you need to go inside bin directory and then start the server with wso2server.sh file it will take around uh, 40 to 50 seconds to get started in my machine and by default it starts on the https port 9443 if you want to change these ports you can do it by changing the value of offset in repository conf carbon xml file first i will show you how authorization code grant type works without uh, pixie and then i'll show you how to apply uh, pixie i'm using set of curl script in fact i did uh, uh, demo uh, a video on this before too like how to use different authorization code grant types with curl scripts uh, here I am going to use the same curl scripts just for the authorization code grant type and then for the pixie so my server got started in 51 seconds now you can log into the identity server where localhost https localhost 9443 that's a default port and identity server comes with an embedded uh, LDAP server so I'm logging with the default username and password from that particular LDAP server but in the production environment you can deploy it over an LDAP active directory or a, or a database now uh, first I need to create an OAuth application here I need to represent uh, OAuth application as a service provider in IS you can click on add uh, give a name uh, let's say my let's say pixie app pkce app so this is the name of my uh, OAuth application or the service provider it can be any name you can pick and then I need to go inside inbound authentication configuration and pick OAuth open ID connect configuration and click on configure I need to give a callback URL here uh, so I'm going to show you uh, this how 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 this works at the at the very low level. So I'm I'm not going to use any web app pure curl. So I just give a URL here. Let's give you local loss 5000 callback. This URL doesn't exist. So there is no application running in my machine listening to this port. So that means anything sent to this uh, URL will stay on the browser, right? So the uh, the way it authorization code works is after the initial authorization code grant request from the client uh, identity server which is acting as the authorization server 
will send the authorization code to this particular URL. So since I don't have an application running on this port, the code will stay on the browser. So I can just copy it from there and paste into my curl script. So that's what I'm going to do. So here you can see I'm uh, the Alint server supports all these uh, brand types and you have option to mark Pixie mandatory. So I'm not going to mark it mandatory because first I'm going to show you how authorization grant works without Pixie. Right. Just add it. So that's all you need to do and this will create a client ID and a client secret for me. Okay. So now you can download the curl script from here. If you go to Aratua, uh, this, that, this is my git repo. You don't need to remember this URL. I'll put this in the description under the video. Then click on curl scripts. Right. And all the curl scripts uh, that I'm going to use in this demo is under this particular directory. And you can download this repo Either you can do a git clone or else download this as a zip file, then go to the curl script directory. I already have this downloaded. It's here. Okay, so this is the same directory that you can download from my git repo. Once you download it, there's a file that you need to change. That is env. Uh, that should be under one step above oath. Right, under curl script, there's a direct uh, file called env.sh so what i do is i keep all my variables here and and then i'll source this file so my the shell environment will get loaded with all these values so then in my other curl scripts i just refer them by this particular variable name right? so this token endpoint is set to identity server token endpoint uh, here so it's 9443020 token. This is your host name, port name. Then the authorization endpoint is set to localhost 9443020 authorize. So these are the two endpoints you need to worry about in this particular demo. Other things uh, you can just uh, skip. Uh, and the client ID and client secret. I need to copy the client ID from here. Okay. Then client secret. Make sure you copy it properly, put it here. Okay, then these things you need not to worry. So this is a scope. Uh, I assume you know uh, what is meant by the scope. And then the redirect URI, this should exactly match what is defined here. It's, it's exactly the same, so I don't need to worry about it. Uh, that's all I need to do. So I have my authorization server ready and my OAuth client ready. Right. Now let's see how the authorization code grant type works first. Okay. So under OAuth directory, I have a curl script called authorization code. I just put it here. It will basically create the URL with all the uh, environment variables. I just need to copy it. And let's open a private window and paste it there. Now I can log in with my username and password from the identity server. The password is incorrect. Let's log in with Peter. Okay, so it asks me to give my consent to the scope. Done. So now you can see this is the callback URL I defined. Since I don't have any application listening for this particular port, it remains on the browser. I don't worry about it, I just copy the code. Right. Then I go back to my curl script. I need to export this as code. Okay. Paste. And then I need to exchange this code to a token. This is how the authorization code grant type works without Pixie. Right? So if I open this script, this is the script that will exchange the authorization code to a token. You can see I'm reading the client ID and client secret from my uh, env.sh file basically from the environment which is loaded to the environment through the env.sh file then I uh, have the client ID which is also loaded from the uh, environment then I have the the redirect URI and also the token endpoint all these are loaded from the environment
now if I type uh, sh code token uh, sh basically I'm executing this script it will return me back the access token okay so this is how the authorization code grant type works without pixie okay now let's see how we can use pixie with OAuth uh, authorization code brand type. Okay. The way Pixie works is first you need to generate a code verifier. Right. So if you look at this particular RFC, if you go down here, you need to you need to create a code verifier which should be minimum of 43 characters and maximum of 128 characters right so first you need to generate this code verifier then you need to create a code challenge out of this verifier so if we are using SHA-256 then you need to generate the hash of SHA-256 hash of this code verifier and then get the base64 URL encoded value of that particular hash right? so I'll explain all this stuff as we go on first let's create the code verifier right so I need to create a uh, character uh, character set which is of minimum uh, 43 characters right I'm using this letter count thing here so let me put any random numbers here this should be random numbers and uh, should be hard to guess so let's see how many characters 35 let's put 70 there okay okay so this is greater than 43 characters so i'll copy this one now i'm going to calculate the uh, sha256 of this particular uh, string and you don't need to do this like uh, by hand you may be using your clients it can be a php client python client or even a java client to do this stuff just for this particular demo and since I want to show you how things actually happening I'm using this online tools now you need can go to this particular website to generate the SHA-256 and I'll I'll uh, put the, all the links to this website through the the description of this particular video now just put paste that value here and then click on convert file this will generate the hash of the SHA-256 hash of the particular string and also it generates the base64 encoded value of this SHA-256 hash. The trick here is we don't need base64. What we need is base64 URL encoding. Right? So I couldn't find a good tool online to do that but I'll do it by hand. Right? There's only very little difference in base64 and base64 URL encode. This slash here it should be replaced by underscore right there are no plus signs if there are any plus signs those should be replaced by the minus so plus in base 64 encoded will be replaced by minus in base 64 you are encoded slash in base 64 will be replaced replaced by underscore in base 64 you are encoded and then again in pixie it is asking to use it's asking not to use padding right so here since you are using padding you can see this equal sign right so there will be a there will be a padding whenever you do uh, when you when whenever you calculate the base 64 you are encoded value of sha256 because sha256 has uh, uh, 256 by bits right so the way we calculate base 64 you are encoded is you first divide it into 24 character sets right so when you divide 256 into 24 character sets you will see it is uh, you have some remaining right uh, so the last set will have 16 characters so you need to add eight more to make it you need to pad that with eight more bits to make it 24 so that means you will have a character for padding which is the equal sign since pixie asks not to use padding we need to remove the uh, you need, we need to remove the 
equal sign. So this is our code challenge, right? So I need to uh, go back and let's uh, source the environment again. Okay. Now we I need to export this as code C. This is a code challenge. Right. And I have a script here called pixie authorization code.sh. I'll show you the script first. So here this is this has little modification from the previous script. Here I have to pass the code challenge method as SHA256. Right. So you can if you don't send a uh, uh, a code challenge method parameter then the authorization server will assume it's plain you should not use that right. and then I load the value of this code challenge from this code C environment variable that's that's why I uh, exported this code challenge to this code C environment variable then I load the client ID uh, and the scope redirect URI those stuff from the uh, environment so now if I just run this shell script, it will produce the URL that I need to copy and paste on the browser. Right. This doesn't do any, any like uh, execute anything, it simply uh, build me the URL where I need to copy and paste on the browser. Okay, now when I just paste it there and it it redirected with login service login page. Let's login with Peter's credentials. Okay, I need to approve it. So once again, it returned me back the authorization code. Right. So now I, I need to export the authorization code here. Okay, so before I execute the other step, let's see what we did so far. We generate a code verifier, we calculate the hash of that. Then we send the hash uh, of that code verifier along with the grant request. Then authorization server will store that hash value in its site and send us back the code. Right? So that hash value is stored at the authorization server against the code. Now in the request to the token endpoint, we need to prove that we own the code verifier corresponding to that hash value. Right? So we need to send the code verifier along with the authorization code to the token endpoint. Then the authorization server will find the code verifier from the from, from that request, calculate the hash of that, and it will verify that that particular hash matches the hash already stored at the authorization server end against that particular authorization code. Right? So if that 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 match is fine successful that means whoever uh, initially generated the code verifier is the one who sent this token request to right so that is how we prevent the code interception attack now i need to copy the value of uh, code verifier right so code verifier is this one right this is the original text we created now we need to send this to the So I export this to code B right. and if you open up the corresponding shell script you can see I am loading code code C here, code B here, code verifier here to the code verifier parameter. right? And if I execute this one, now it returns me the same access token and internally I didn't say also validates whether, uh, whether the verifier that I sent matches with the hash it already stored against the issued authorization code. So this is how Pixie works. So let me go back to the spec and explain this code interception attack. Pixie was mostly introduced targeting the mobile native apps, right? So here in this particular diagram, you can see there are two applications, legitimate O2 app, a malicious app, both are running uh, in a smart device, smartphone, right? 
so here what happens is the way uh, the native apps work in a mobile device uh, whenever you want to log into a native app you need to spin up the system browser right so so then in the system browser you will complete the authorization code ground flow and you will get the authorization code to a callback url then the mobile operating system should know how to pass this authorization code to the corresponding native app to, to do that the native app has to register a url scheme against that app so if the operating system sees a, sees uh, the corresponding url scheme is on the browser then it will pick it and hand it over to the uh, corresponding native app right so the thing is there can be a case multiple applications can register against same url scheme right so that means you get authorization code to a particular url scheme and if there are two applications registered against same url scheme both will get the code right so in that in, in that way a malicious app can intercept the authorization code in a mobile application in environment then again you will think even though you get the code right to exchange the code to an access token by token token endpoint you need to have the client ID and the client secret. So how come the malicious app get the client ID and the client secret? In mobile world, in native apps, most of the time, people use to embed the same client ID and client secret in all the apps. So in that case, so mobile apps are running on mobile devices are untrusted clients. If you own the mobile device, if you have the root access, you can do anything. So they can find the client ID and client secret from the legitimate app and then embed that client ID and client secret into the malicious app. So malicious app knows the client ID and client secret and this with, with this uh, interception attack it can find authorization code so it can execute this interception code interception attack and get hold of the access token. But with code with this uh, uh, pixie you cannot do that. The reason is when you generate authorization code request here the legitimate app will generate the code verifier and send the code challenge here right now the authorization code will go into both the apps right but to get the token endpoint you need to send the code verifier only the legitimate app knows about the code verifier but not the malicious app so that is how pixie solves this authorization code interception attack that concludes uh, the demo today and the presentation today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them uh, under the comment section uh, below this particular video. Thank you very much.